They did find that, but it was human blood, so they're basically now elf vampires? Hello my loves and thank you for joining me, it's Kirsten and we're starting a weekly vlog on a Saturday which I would say is a bit unusual for me, I feel like it has been lately but it's not unheard of, uh, the reason being is because from tomorrow I have an extremely busy four days, like extremely busy, so I need to start this vlog and not stress about it tomorrow because I have my last night shift is that when I get home in the morning I'm going to be sleeping for just a couple of hours and then I'm meeting my partner and I don't want to be trying to rush around and also cram in starting a weekly vlog. We're going to cut that out and not stress about it. That makes my life easier. <laughs> so we're starting it today instead as usual 30 seconds after I wrapped up last week's vlog. This week as I said I've got a really busy few days so Tomorrow, me and my partner, we're actually having a London day and a date night and everything, which I'm very excited about. And then Monday, Costco, which I'm not as excited about, but it does need doing because I am running low on a few supplies. So that's the plan with him. Then Tuesday, we're, oh, he's actually coming with me. We're going up to see my dad. Then Wednesday, I've got a London day this time with my dad because I haven't actually seen him in a little while and I finally got some time off to actually be able to spend time with him. And then Thursday, I have a day free. So we're gonna use that day to catch up on everything else. So like I said, busy few days. That's the plan. Now you know. <laughs> Did you need to know all of this? I don't know, but we know now. And <laughs> let me know what you have been up to. And I obviously reading, what have you been up to over the weekend and stuff. Stuff, like let me know let's have a nice little conversation but reading wise well last week we did kind of finish up my November TBR sort of I am in the middle of Small Favours by Erin A. Craig and this is my month-long buddy read with Ellie and Steph I will have both of them linked below and I have got to read Spring both of them have actually already read this I thought we weren't starting it until Monday so I didn't start this and then I got messaged yesterday going oh I finished from Ellie and then Steph a few hours later oh I finished too and I'm like I haven't started yet <laughs> so I'm going to take this one to work with me and hopefully I'll be finishing up today and so we can discuss our thoughts and everything on it but this has been a really nice month-long buddy read this is following Ellery who lives in Amity Falls which is a very closed off town that's surrounded by this really creepy forest and really unusual things have been happening we've had mutated animals we've had two supply runs that have been trying to get into all the towns and everything to get supplies for them to last through winter and they have have not made it back and so in this town we are bordering on starvation because of the fact they have no supplies tensions are running really high you see a lot of animosity between one another and neighbors turning on one another the town reminds me so much of a cult there is a lot going on and it is really spooky however I would really like some answers now because I feel like there's a lot to wrap up in a very short amount of time so it'll be interesting to see how it's done this is going to be the first thing that I plan on finishing and apart from one manga actually let me get it uh which is the promised neverland volume two then that is everything off of my november tbr read for the month so i definitely am going to be reading this one as well because i've got a busy few days i will probably take this with me in one of the days because that way i can just read it when I'm traveling and stuff and it'll be a nice thing to get done. So those are two books I definitely plan on finishing. And then I've just got to decide, do I just want to start my December TBR early? Because we are at the end of November or I may read a Kindle book on my phone. I do really want to get a Kindle. I was really hoping that there would be some in like Black Friday sales and stuff, but the Kindle that I want was not in sale. Um, it's just the basic one. It's the new basic because I, I don't know what else I want from it. Um, but yeah, so that's what I'm going to be getting hopefully soon ish but I, I i'm also thinking do i just go for something just completely different not on my tbr read that because i tend to find okay a lot of the books that i have on my kindle are just like smart orientated and so those are just simple books i don't need to focus too much on and as a result they are quick reads we'll see because i'm kind of letting myself mood determine what i would like to read whether i want to start december tbr or go with a easy smut book I don't know I've started a couple of series on there so I am tempted to continue on with a couple of those we have all the ideas and no idea what we're going to be doing apart from this little stack so that's where we're starting was this a rambly introduction yes did I expect it to be no I need to put some washing on I think I'm going to be editing for a little bit and yeah I also need to get my bag ready and everything for tomorrow as well because I know I'm going to be too tired in the morning to try and 
do this properly so I'm gonna get myself organized so yeah thank you so much for joining me uh, again let me know what you've been up to and all of that jazz but okay I'm I'm still in ramble territory I'm gonna spare you for another five minute long ramble about nonsense and actually get on with doing some stuff so come with me for the journey I will bring you along with what we get up to and of course update you with what I actually get around to reading Good morning! It's weird actually filming in the morning after a week of filming only in the afternoon because of my night shifts. It's also weird that I haven't spoken to you in a couple of days. We had an interesting few days. So Saturday night I obviously had work and I actually finished Small Favours. This was good. The atmosphere in this is spot on. I love the slow growing sense of creepiness, eeriness, just things that this town is just so wrong. But the ending I do think was a bit rushed I do think it could have been explored a bit more I would say it's the only downside I enjoyed everything else and I do think the ending explored some really interesting things as to why this was all happening I feel like it could have been expanded upon so much more and there was a couple of things that didn't really get tied up so there was a couple of loose ends in this that I think would have been really nice that again just an extra chapter or two spent with it just to polish it all off would have been perfect that being said I did really really enjoyed this book because of the atmosphere in it. I do think it was a really good creepy horror book and I enjoyed it. I think it was really good. Again this is the sort of horror that I like where it's not like jump scares at you, it's not loads of really grotesque things happening although there are some scenes of that. It is more to do with the atmosphere of this and if that sounds like something you'd like I do recommend. I like the way it was split up into different seasons, how the different seasons impacted this town and the tensions that were going on and everything and just the way it all ended was so chaotic and stuff but it did work work it's just I think a couple of chapters at the end just to finish off a couple of loose threads potentially explored a few other things a little bit more that would have been perfect other than that I haven't really read much because the last couple of days have been very very busy I have been very tired and so I just haven't read much instead what I have been reading a kindle book on my phone this has been a lifesaver because when I get a few spare moments I can just whip out my phone and read a few pages and so that's what I've been doing. I did start this on Saturday night although I didn't get far into it. Even now to be fair I am only up to 21% through the book so I've got ages left to go but this is Haunting Adelaide and this is by H.D. Colton and this is a dark romance book. It's exactly what I needed. Remember I did say of course you remember do I remember? <laughs> I did say that this week I wasn't sure if I'd be starting my December TBR early or if I would just pick up something on my phone to read because it's easier, it's lighter, I don't need to focus. Well that's exactly what I ended up going for and I am enjoying this book. There is a massive list of trigger warnings at the start of the book so do read those before going into it. I think it's really good when authors do that just so you can actually see if there's content in there which you are not comfortable with and then you can give that book a miss. As it is we are following in two different perspectives, one of them being Adelaine and she is a self-published author, that's how she makes her living. She's also inherited a mansion from her nan which she is in the process of doing up. Adelaine and her mother have a very strained relationship and they don't get on at all. Her mother is constantly trying to tell her to get rid of the mansion and stuff and finally gives her a couple of reasons as to why to do this. Adelaine goes, no, nope, not interested and she's gonna stay where she is. However, she has now got a stalker. Then we go to the second perspective and the second perspective is our stalker. I think his name's Zade but I don't think it's actually been confirmed yet and he 
is obsessed with Adelaide. He saw her at a book sign-in and since then has become obsessed. He's been breaking into her house, leaving a red rose. He's now leveled it up to text messages and stuff. But as much as he sounds like an absolute crazy person, and he is, he's also very fascinating because you learn more about him and what he does. He started off as a hacker uncovering all of the government's best kept secrets and showing them out to the public to show what they're actually doing until he discovers something that is just so depraved that he's like no we need more than people just knowing about this and so he turns kind of vigilante but also mercenary. He's uncovered this massive sex ring full of these men who traffic children. It's honestly atrocious and so he goes about finding these, hunting them down, destroying the men that are doing it, and I mean destroying, and being able to set all of these children free. So that is what he does for his day to day, and then he's just been spending his time stalking Adelaide. They haven't actually crossed paths yet properly, so it's going to be really interesting to see when that all happens and how it's going to turn about. Like I said, it is a dark romance book. I mean, I've only read 20%, but there seems to be a lot more plot in this book, which I'm finding really interesting. Sometimes you can get these sort of dark romance books where it's basically just non-stop smart and stuff, and you know what? I'm not mad about it. it. Is what it is. It's a nice easy read, and this one just seems to have a little bit more plot to it, but I guess we're going to see going forward from that. But that's the book that I'm reading at the moment, finding it really easy just to bring around on my phone. That's all the reading updates. Sunday I did go up to central London with my partner. I also got myself a new jumper because it was in the Black Friday sales, it was 40% off. I really like this one. I said to myself no more pink jumpers, but technically this has other colours in it. And this is also going to be replacing a jumper that I have because it's not doing so well. But this is absolutely gorgeous. It is so soft. I really, really love it. I also picked up a kind of like pleather blazer jacket, which is something that I've never had before, but decided that I really wanted. And again, 40% off. So I decided, you know, couldn't say no to that. So I'm really pleased with those. I did actually also treat myself to a pair of shoes, which, okay, these were not in the sale. And I fully blame Christina for this. So Christina, this is your fault that I bought shoes. She did a recent ASOS haul and I got very jealous over the jumper and the boots. In case you hadn't noticed, it kind of influenced the fact that I bought a jumper and boots. <laughs> but these are gorgeous. I really like them. They are Dot Martins. I love the heel on this. And of course the staple stitching on the sole. And this part is really, really soft. It's really supple. I wore these all day yesterday and did not have a problem. I really like them. I don't actually have a ankle boot like this with the thick heel like that. Did I need another pair of boots? No, but I am nothing if not easily swayed. So that is what I did and then yesterday we went to Costco and I got all the vegetable and stuff so I could do meal prep which should last me about a month or so which makes my life easier as you would have seen that. And that's where we're up to. Today is going to be another busy day. I'm going up to my dad's. I think I mentioned that already at the start of this. My partner's coming with me. We're just going to play some games and stuff. So we'll see how that goes. I will be bringing my Kindle book with me to read while we're traveling because there is quite a bit of traveling to do today. I'm just really worn out. I'm really looking forward to Thursday because I don't actually have to leave the house if I don't want to. I think I might have to leave to do a couple of bits of like food shopping. So I'm really pleased. And now the neighbours have started drilling, so I think that's time for me to stop rambling. So I'm going to start my day. We will catch up soon. I am planning to start my December TBR, but we'll see when that actually happens because I want to read a fantasy book, but I know I'm also too tired to focus on that, hence the Kindle book at the minute, but hopefully we'll start it this week. I make no promises. I'm incredibly tired. I've been really struggling to get back into sleeping just properly at night whereas I've had a week of having very broken up sleep and apparently we just want to roll with that which is not fun. Anyway I'm still rambling so I've got to go, I've got a train to catch and everything and yep I will update hopefully with having read a little bit more of my book.
Good morning. It's been another little bit since I updated. I actually think this vlog might be a little bit shorter than usual. But I've just been so busy these past few days, which I knew was going to be the case. It has also meant I haven't read loads either. So let's start off with the book that I last spoke about, which is Haunting Adeline. And I am 59% of the way through. So we've passed the halfway mark. That's chapter 26 that I'm up to. You know, last time I was saying there's no smut or anything. Well, that definitely stepped up there is lots going on now. We've had Zaid, it is Zaid and Adeline meet each other and there's been a lot going on especially because obviously Zaid is stalking her but at the same time he's also saving children and women from trafficking and so it's a very weird situation to be in. I mean yeah but it's good book. The plot is actually still developing really nicely with this which is something that as I mentioned before like I don't expect with dark romance books is having a continuous plot that actually holds my attention and works well but this one does it actually does quite well. So we have a bit of like a cold case murder mystery going on and then of course you have everything to do with the trafficking that Zaid is trying to bring it down and it just makes it so that there's more to this story rather than just smart which I actually am enjoying. So 59% of the way through that. I am hoping that I'll finish it up today but today as much as I don't plan on going outside, okay I have to do a bit of food shopping but apart from that I don't plan on going outside at all. I do have editing and bits I need to get done because I just haven't been able to. So I've got vlog to go up tomorrow which would have been the vlog before this which normally by now is already scheduled but I've been so busy that in the evenings I've just been too tired to do the final edits so I've got that to do. I want to try and film my November wrap up which should be out before this video as well. It's going to be interesting going back to doing wrap ups but couple of people have been asking for them and I have kind of come up with hopefully a bit more of a fun way to keep myself entertained and stuff while doing it and if I'm enjoying the video that I'm filming you can definitely tell the difference and so hopefully that works and then just a few other bits like editing wise fingers crossed we'll get stuff done because I did actually pre-film quite a lot for December so I'm not worried about that it's just editing. I'm not going to push myself though I've got just mainly those two things that I want to do and if I can get another bit done brilliant if not not that bothered. Anyway I did read one other thing and that was The Promised Neverland volume 2. I'm really enjoying this manga actually. It's so interesting and even this one although not a lot happened in it I was still so intrigued the whole way through. This one we're following three main children and they are part of this orphanage. Now this orphanage is a bit unusual because they have these massive like stone walls that block off the outside and they also have to perform these tests and they get ranked on their test scores and everything and every so often a child will get adopted but they never see or hear from them ever again and they don't actually see the people that's adopting them either until our trio discovers something dreadful absolutely dreadful that's going on and that's all in the first volume. The second volume is then what are they going to do about it? And this one is a lot slower. There's no big like revelations and stuff. Well, I suppose there is one. Otherwise, it's just them trying to prepare to try and escape this place. And I really enjoyed it. So even though it wasn't like massively action fueled or anything like that, seeing how they're going to deal with this problem, how they're slowly trying to develop here and just seeing them put their minds together and seeing what they can do is just so interesting like I'm really enjoying it also these covers are amazing because you get little hints and things of what's going to come throughout the book and then well manga um and then once I've read it I like being able to see like oh that was that and seeing all those little bits I, I it's the thing that I enjoy but yeah I really enjoy this I really like the art style it's gripping it doesn't take long to read obviously because it's manga but I enjoy it. So I'm looking forward to carrying on with that series, which I'm pleased that I'm still enjoying because I really enjoyed the first few volume and then I was a bit like, oh, am I going to enjoy the rest of this? I'm not sure. And it's definitely kept it going. So I'm very pleased about that. I do have a bit of a book haul because whenever my dad and I would go up to central London, we would always hear all the different bookshops. And I mean all the different bookshops. You've got Hatchards, Waterstones, Food and Planet, 
all of them. But something that I've been finding with bookshops and that is that I'm just really struggling to find books that I want. So I will go in with screenshots of the books that I'm really interested in, ones that I want to get, and then I'm just, I'm just struggling. And they're not even like smaller books that, yeah, okay, fair enough, they may not have, but they're actual books that like, they're popular. You would expect them to have it. Like Finley Donovan is Killing It is a book that I really want to get and I couldn't find it anywhere. I did still manage to get a few, which is nice. Not necessarily the ones that I was going in there for, but it was still nice to get a few and I did have a Waterstones gift card to use up as well. So one of the ones I got is Brandon Sanderson's Cytonic, which is the Skyward, the last book in that trilogy. There is one set of short stories that I need to read before this, but I couldn't find it in paperback yet so I'm not sure if it's out yet in paperback. It is out in hardback but I have them all in paperback so I want to get them. So I'm gonna wait and see if I can get that in the paperback and I think that one's called Skyward Flight something like that but apparently you're meant to read those before continuing on with this. I'll see if I can't find it anytime soon then I might just read this anyway if I feel like it. But this one is a young adult sci-fi. I really enjoyed the first one. We're on this place where humans have been relegated to this world and they are struggling for survival, trying to push out but they can't because there's a species called the krell that constantly try and attack them and then you learn lots of different things. We're following Spencer. She's always wanted to be a fighter pilot but they were very much but they were always very much against that because of who her father was and the fact that something happened. They've now been branded as cowards and so she finds it really difficult and that's all in the first book. And I really liked it. I thought it was really entertaining. So yeah, looking forward to carrying on with book three. I then also picked up The Grace of Kings by Ken Liu. This is the start of an epic fantasy quartet. I picked this up because of Abby. I will have her channel linked below and she recently finished up this series. She also did a video on whether you should read it or not and I was really really intrigued and feeling like getting back into fantasy and so fingers crossed I mean I love these covers look how stunning that is that is beautiful um I don't know too much about this one I know there's a lot of like um politics and stuff but let's just read the back the emperor was the first to unite the island kingdoms of Dara under a single banner but now the emperor is on his deathbed. His people are exhausted by his vast conscriptive engineering projects and his counsellors conspire only for their own gain. Even the gods themselves are restless. A wily charismatic bandit and the vengeance sworn son of a deposed duke cross paths as they each lead their own rebellion against the emperor's brutal regime. Together they will journey to the heart of the empire, witnessing the clash of armies, fleets of silk-draped airships, magical books and shape-shifting gods. Their unlikely friendship will drastically change the balance of power in Dara. But at what price? It does sound really good and this is the start of the Dandelion Dynasty. From what Abby was saying it's actually quite dark in places so I'm just really intrigued to try it and just test out a new fantasy world and see if I can get on with it because as I said I am I am really feeling it and that just looks stunning. So let me know if you've read this one. It's not one that I've seen loads and loads of people read but Abby said enough high praise that I was excited. And then the last book that I picked up is one that I was that I wanted but wasn't looking for specifically yesterday and that's Ocean's Echo by Evrina Maxwell. This is the same author of Winter's Orbit. I've not read that one. This is a sci-fi and I don't always get on with sci-fi but this one I do know has quite a good romance plot in this and again I think Abby was the one talking about it saying how she thinks she thinks Evrina focus like the way she writes the romance and that is is really really good so that's kind of like holding my attention and I'm hoping that if that works really well and I get on with these characters then hopefully the sci-fi part of it all I will enjoy and like I don't know we're gonna try it it sounded really good we have a socialite a soldier and unwilling bond and um, this one it is a standalone within the same world so i believe you don't have to read winter's orbit first but obviously if i like this then i will be getting winter's orbit um, and this is one i would like to read soon actually it's just something about it has been really calling to me when tenno a rich socialite inveterate flirt and walking disaster is caught using his telepathic powers for illegal activities the military decides to bind his mind to someone whose coercive powers are strong enough to control him. Enter Lieutenant Surrett, the child of a disgraced general. 
Under pressure, Lieutenant Surratt agrees to be bound to Tennell and keep him conscripted in the army, a task that seems impossible even for someone with Surratt's ability to control minds. Tennell just wants to escape, but Surratt isn't all that he seems, and their bond may just be the key to their freedom. Ocean's Echo is a standalone romantic space adventure. So that's why I'm intrigued in it, because I think, as I said, if I can get on with the romance part of this, then the fact that it's set in space and that I won't mind as much. That's the plan. We're going to see. I am intrigued. I've really been feeling like reading it. So hopefully I'd like to pick up this one really soon. I mean, I have my December TBR set, but maybe in January or if I feel like mood reading and picking it up, like... I am, I have high hopes. I really do have high hopes. Let me know if you've read this one or not. But those were the books that I got. One book that I was desperate to find and could not find anywhere is Holly Jackson's new book, which is Five Survive. And that book was published on the 29th. And so I was going the next day to go pick up a copy. Uh, the whole reason why I was going that's my nephew, <laughs> going book shopping in the first place. And they didn't have it. I went to a couple of Waterstones and they didn't have it at all. And I was so surprised that they didn't have it. And then Waterstones are like, oh, we, we do have it on the way, but we're having supply issues. And I'm just like, oh, great. <laughs> Even Forbidden Planet and that, they didn't have a copy either. And I was very gutted because I love Holly Jackson. Like her, A Good Girl's Guide to Murder series was my one of my favourites YA murder mysteries. It was one of the first that I read that really got me into that genre and so gutted they didn't have it. So I have fully decided that I'm 100% getting a Kindle. Like I was still a bit like, oh, it's not a necessity. I'll probably put it off for a little bit, but no, definitely after Christmas, I'm going to get myself one because it's just getting so hard to find books that I want in physical stores. And as much as I can order them, because they're having such bad supply issues, it can take weeks to get them. And it's just so frustrating. And so I've decided, do you know what? No, I'm just gonna get a Kindle because some of the books that I was looking for, I didn't realize was actually on Kindle Unlimited. Some of them are, were only like, they were having a bit of a sale. So it was only like one pound or two pounds to get them. So I'm just like, you know what? I might as well do that. Obviously, if I like the book, I will always go out and buy the physical copy, but at least I won't be so bothered when I can't find it because I'm wanting to read it so soon. That's what I've decided. It's just, I, I don't want to because I've been very much a supporter of like Waterstones, independent bookshops, things like that, but it's just getting so hard. But Rantover, those are the new books. I have to admit, out of all of these three, I am the most excited for Ocean's Echo at the moment. I'm really feeling that, but I am pleased I've got a new fantasy series to dabble in and to try because again, I have this thing where every so often I'll look at my shelves and I'll be like, oh, I fancy some fantasy and I'll look at it and be like, oh, why don't I have any new ones? And I have a couple, but like, they're probably like four or five. And I'll be like, is that it? That's the, my only choice of selection. And so then I'll be like, I wanna buy some more. And then this is what happens. Anyway, that's a tangent. I've been chatting for quite a while. I didn't expect this update to be so long. So I'm gonna leave you. I'm gonna get on with my day. I've got, as I've already mentioned, how much stuff I've got to do today. So we're just gonna get on with that. And tomorrow I'm actually on earlies. So I'll probably update you after I get back from work and what I'm gonna be reading. I have plans, but it depends what I get read today and stuff. Anyway, we're not gonna go into those plans because otherwise this update is gonna be even longer. I said this vlog would be shorter and now I'm not so sure. Anyway, thanks for listening to me ramble. And I'm, you're going to see me in a few moments, but I will chat to you tomorrow afternoon, probably.
Did I start this without pressing record? Yes. So let's try again. It is the afternoon. We have had honestly an okay day at work. I'm just very tired because, you know, early shift and all of that. But we have some chaotic energy happening. So we're just going to run with it. I was actually feeling like this week I haven't really read that much. And I think that's because I've been reading a Kindle book. Because in reality, I have read Small Favours. Well, the small section that I read for this week, you know, which was all of this. So that's actually quite a bit to be fair. So I read all of that. I also read my manga, so The Promised Neverland Volume 2, and I did read the Kindle book, which I finished today, which was Haunting Adeline. This was a good book. It was actually 530 pages, which I was quite surprised at. It was fun. It was an enjoyable book that I didn't really have to focus on, which was perfect for this week and being so busy, which I really did not plan well considering I did the four extremely busy days coming off the back of my seven night shifts. It was it was not the best plan in the world. You know, that's beside the point. Point is I was able to read a ebook during that time as well but I think because it was on my phone it hasn't felt like I've actually read a book even though I have because I don't physically have it here to hold up and show to you and haven't had it in my hands. Haven't felt like I've been reading even though as said, I finished a whole book, which actually, you know what, let's talk about my thoughts on that before I start going into this massive tangent. I did enjoy it. As I said, it was a really easy read, did exactly what I needed to. It had good plot to go with the smart things that I've already said. A couple of things that I didn't quite enjoy was the amount of swearing that's in this book. Like, I do think it was unnecessary. Obviously, dark romance books, they do tend to have a lot of swearing in it, but I always do think it's a bit unnecessary. You don't actually need that much. And that was a continuing thought for this book which is why I didn't really mention it because I feel like it's expected and I think if you've been on this channel a little while you know that I'm not a massive fan of swearing within books so yeah that was a negative on it for me personally also I do think the writing could have been a bit better it served its purpose well so I don't actually mind and also the ending was very predictable the way it all ended and stuff I knew what was going to happen from about halfway through the book and even the mystery there was a murder mystery going on a cold case even that who had done it again I worked all of that out very early on but I didn't go into this book to be questioning it I went into it because it was going to be an easy read and so again although those are negatives and while I might not necessarily reread this book I don't know actually, would I? Potentially, if I'm in that mood, I don't know. I feel like I would try a different dark romance book if I'm in that mood. But it wasn't it wasn't dreadful either. Like I've definitely read worse ones. <laughs> so it, it fitted the bill for exactly what I wanted. And you know what? I still want to get that second book because it is a duology. And even though it was predictable in the way it ended, I still want to know what's going to happen as a result of it and see how it's all going to come about. So still really enjoyed that but yeah as I was saying I do feel like because I'm reading a book on Kindle it's well on my phone it's not feeling like I've read a book I am hoping that when I get a Kindle which I'm definitely doing after Christmas it will feel a bit more like I've actually read a book because it's separate to my phone rather than feeling like I'm on my phone all the time because of it I don't know we're gonna see with that one actually saying that talking about ebooks I did start another ebook while I was at work but that's The Last Housewife by Ashley Winstead this is a book that came out earlier this year literally only a couple of months ago and it's one that I'm really intrigued by I saw Olivia talking about it and also Cody talking about it as well I have both their channels linked below they mentioned it enough that I was like you know what I'm gonna check this book out and so it was on kindle for 1.99 so picked it up and i'm enjoying it so far i'm not far into it i'm five percent in so i'm up to chapter three and we've just had obviously the setup for the first two chapters we're following our main character shay and she is a very rich housewife she never set out to be a housewife she actually left her journalist job to write a book but she's been struggling for the last six months and so it's basically been a housewife and that's what she's reflecting upon and she's talking about how she's really got into true crime podcasts as a result of all of this and as she's listening to a podcast she hears that one of her friends from college has died and it's really eerie because it's also reminiscent of another one of her friends that eight years beforehand also died in the exact same way and you know straight away that there is stuff that's happened in the past that is going on that 
things are not quite what they seem and she's constantly thinking like nope we're not going to open that door but then she decides you know what I did make a promise that I was going to look after these girls and I broke it and even though she was the same age as them like it, it just seems really really interesting the synopsis of it again like just kind of grips me recruiting the help of the podcast host Shay goes back to the place she vowed she'd never return to search for answers as she follows the threads of her friend's life she's pulled into a dark seductive world where wealth and privilege shield brutal philosophies that feel all too familiar when Shay's obsession with uncovering the truth becomes so consuming she can no longer separate her desire for justice from darker desires newly reawakened. She must confront the depths of her own complicity and conditioning. But in a world built for men to rule it, both inside the cult and outside of it, is justice even possible? And so that's what really, I mean, first of all, cult, I'm definitely intrigued by that already. And I just think it's going to be hopefully a good addictive thriller book, which I did try reading an adult thriller this month already, and it didn't go to plan. So I'm going to see if I like this one. I do want to pick up a physical book next. And I did put a poll up on Instagram of three books. Now there are two books that are clearly winning and the last time I checked they both had 10 votes each which that's not helpful that's really not helpful so let's see if that's actually changed nope it's still got 10 votes each but Instagram has changed it slightly so we have one book at 42% and one at 41% now the two books in the run-in we have the reread of the month which is Way of Kings part one and this one was winning by quite a bit at first actually however Ninth Rain has creeped in there and got the 42% so that is the book we're gonna go with I don't know if I'm gonna finish it this week the fact that we're on Friday already I am really not thinking I will but something that I do want to do is actually annotate it because that's something I've been thinking about this month I haven't really actually for a little bit I haven't actually annotated a book and I'm finding I miss it I actually find that when I'm annotating a book I will absorb the information so much better it makes me read slower and it also find it just increases my enjoyment of the book I take so much more from it and the reason why I stopped annotating is I'm happy to annotate the books that I know I'm really enjoying and I'm going to keep and I will go back and annotate the first pages if I want to sometimes I can't be bothered and so I'll carry on not annotating but part of me goes but what if I don't enjoy this book and I want to unhaul it and I want to give it away or give it to a charity shop and it's got annotations in it. I need to get over that. I don't annotate heavily as it is. I mainly just underlined phrases. I sometimes write a sentence or two but it's very rare to get more than just an underline. But I would really like to go back to that. It just made me feel so much more immersed in the stories. And if I enjoy it more than I think going forward I'm just going to annotate all my books. And this is a long update already but it's going to get longer because I have book mail. I actually did a oh my gosh a book swap with a few of the books that I was unhauling I got messaged and asked if I'd be interested in a book swap with a couple of the paperbacks and I was like yes definitely and so we did I went for a few that are outside of my comfort zone but I thought this was a really good way to try out new books okay so the first one is The Girl on the Train by Paula Hawkins this is a thriller book which I'm pretty sure everyone knows it was really really popular but i've just never actually read this one it's a thriller book we also have the x hex by erin sterling this is one that i saw loads of in october loads of people are picking it up for october it is more of like a romance would it be fancy romance because there's witchcraft yeah I'm gonna say like a fantasy contemporary romance it, again outside of what I would normally go for but it seems like a lighter fun read I know we're following a main character who puts a curse on her boyfriend or is it ex-boyfriend thinking it's not gonna stick that it's all just made up and fun and stuff and it turns out actually that stark magic is real and um now they've got to try and work this all out and then the last one is another book by Paula Hawkins and that's A Slow Burning Fire I do believe this is her more recent book just thought I'd give it a try I haven't read any Paula Hawkins and wanted to try some so this is what we've got and okay yeah I think this update has gone on for long enough plus I'm actually getting really hungry is it too early for dinner I don't think it's even four o'clock yet maybe I'll have a snack and then eat a little bit later otherwise I'm only going to be hungry again you guys don't need to know this I'm sorry I'm going I'm going so 
to recap we are going to be reading the ninth rain at home we're going to be annotating and then i've got my kindle book the last housewife which i'm going to be carrying on with at work i've got one more early and then it's mid shifts which is much better that's what we're doing for the end of this week let me stop the ramble so that I can spare you from this. Honestly, you are all the real heroes here for actually listening and watching and putting up with these rambles that I just can't seem to stop. So give yourself a pat on the back. I'm gonna go get some food. really could not be bothered to set up the tripod or sort out my hair after work or anything basically I'm even in my pyjamas but here's the update <laughs> so I have actually read more of The Last Housewife I am up to chapter 11 we are now 31% of the way through the book and I'm really enjoying it it's definitely got a lot more interesting so obviously yesterday I had only read two chapters and that was just the setup of everything now we're learning a little bit more about Shay's time while she was at college with the girl that has been murdered slash suicide laurel and the girl that happened eight years before that which was clem and they all went to college together and they got mixed up in this other girl and her father and it's been really interesting learning about that it deals with some quite darker topics but i think it does it in a really interesting way like really well done it doesn't feel pointless at any point so I think it's handling those darker topics quite well you should check the trigger warnings with everything though I think it's doing a good job of that and it's also highlighting a lot of things in general when it comes to being viewed as a beautiful woman or even someone that's experienced a traumatic thing it's disregarded by society it's constantly questioned and it shouldn't be and I think that's it, the book makes a point of if you're a girl but to be honest regardless of gender that is the case with a lot of things so it's just handling some very dark and difficult subjects but I think doing it in a really interesting way and it's generating a lot of conversations I'm actually even highlighting on the kindle which isn't something I've done before I say that as if I've been reading loads of ebooks which I suppose I am now like reading them more consistently but yeah I've never highlighted using that before so I'm now doing that and I'm also making little notes as well I didn't know you could do that either so been learning a lot about it so it's basically like annotating the book just on the ebook version which I am enjoying so that's what I was focusing on today while I was at work freezing cold lately by the way absolutely freezing today tangent not the point uh, yesterday evening I did start ninth rain and I'm really enjoying this book so I'm on chapter 5 page 70 and there's quite a lot that's gone on a lot of the first few chapters has just been world building we've had introductory chapters for each of our characters and now we're seeing the developments and progresses from that I have actually taken the time which you it doesn't really shop here but um to write a load of notes for everything just to make sure I didn't miss anything when I'm talking to you about this book because I think it's very interesting it's really well written the three main characters we're following one is Tor and he is this elf like being they are really long lived they are very strong and they were relying on their tree god um, it has a different name but that's how it's referred to a lot but that tree god died in the last war and they lost that ability to be longer lived like they were dying from sickness their wounds weren't healing as well where they were basically becoming human they didn't want that so they then started to try and find other means to give them what this tree god used to be able to do they did find that but it was human blood so they're basically now elf vampires um they then found that having a blood of humans and stuff comes with a very drastic side effect and that's something called the crimson flux which is basically this disease which then kills them off so there are not many left of them at all Tor is one of the few 
and he has decided to leave the city that they had and is kind of going out alone being a bit of a outcast really then we also have humans and the human that we're following is vintage or vin for short and she is 40 years old which actually it's quite nice to read about an older female character in the books i feel like our main characters there's always that younger I don't know maybe that's just the books that I've read but it's nice to read someone that's actually like 40s you know it's, it's just not an age genre that I've read about with a main character but tangent again she worked at this vineyard well she had this vineyard and um, it was her family's estate she was constantly seeing something called the wild that was encroaching on their vineyard and the wild is again like this disease that's come about but of life it's changing animals into it so they're a lot bigger a lot wilder a lot more vicious it's killing off plants and things it just makes the world basically inhabitable by people in hospital in you can't live there basically it's very dangerous and she's had enough of it like it grows every single year regardless of what they try and do and so she wants to set out and find information about it however her brother's a bit like uh no you're a 40 year old woman you're not meant to be doing that you need to stay here and run the estate and she's like you know what fudge that that's not my life and sets out anyway she ends up meeting up with Tor and those two are working together and then we have our final character Noon and Noon is a witch so the witches are all women they are kept in what is basically a prison on this island where nothing is allowed to grow they're kept very segregated there are strict rules that come into play with them and honestly it's quite horrendous and you realize that they are seen as this really like evil people and they have to be purged by being purged the way they do this is they allow the witches to use their power because all their power comes from the fact that they can take the life force of something whether it's living animal plants or humans or yeah you know, other people basically take that energy that's given and then turn it into something called a winnow flame which is this ridiculously hot flame that you can't get any other way reason why you know that this is all a load of bs is because not only is it wrong to be keeping women caged up like this in prisons and treating them this way but they are also using this flame to create a specific drug that cannot be created without it and it's a sleeping drug they purge these girls to use their flame to create this drug while keeping them all holed up in this place and it is horrendous this world is so interesting so we have come off the back of a war that happened let me swap arms hang on seriously i need to like start doing something to strengthen up my arms this is terrible what was i saying yeah off the back of this war now this war actually happened like 300 years ago it's called the eighth reign so it seems like there were these different reigns that happened with these different wars against these specific beings the remains of these beings that vin believes is causing all of this discord within the world the wild part of it all the disease that's running around there are also these spirits that can basically like it's really quite grotesque they like rip the flesh of humans and stuff but i personally don't think they're as bad as what they are they're leftover remnants from something called a worm there's a lot going on in this world there is a lot but it really does make sense when you read it i'm just doing a terrible job of explaining it but basically she's trying to explore it and understand it you have these spirit beings that are basically like parasites and it's all surrounding leftovers from this war 300 years ago which is where the elves we're gonna call them elves um tree died and since then all these problems have been generating so that's what we're at honestly i'm really intrigued really loving it loving the fact that i'm annotating it honestly annotating books is definitely the way to go for me i never never would have caught me saying that ever but I am really enjoying it and I think it makes for a really good reading experience and makes me think about it a lot more and I've remembered a lot more of this book, taken a lot more in, made a lot more connections than I would have if I wasn't annotating, which I am loving. So yeah, this is really good. I'm really pleased I picked it up, but I don't think I'm going to be finishing it this weekend at all. So that's going to carry on into next week. The last housewife i think i will finish uh i've got a mid shift tomorrow but it's quite chill and it says i've got about four hours 
left in the ebook and I really am very engrossed. I'm really wanting to find out this mystery of what's happened to Shay's friend, or what's happened to Shay's past because there is a lot that she doesn't want to talk about, a lot of shame that she has around it and just a lot of things build in. So I really think I'm going to be able to finish that book tomorrow. It's, it's very good, very enjoyable and I think that's it for this update. So you remember when I said earlier this week how this vlog's going to be shorter because I updated less earlier in the week and I don't know why I lied to myself. I don't know why I lied to you. I mean it's not going to be a lie to you because you would have seen the fact that this video is longer but there's for wishful thinking hey. Anyway I'm going to go have a shower and honestly oh, I was about to say just sit down and read Ninth Rain and carry on with that but no because I need to start editing this vlog. So I guess I will have a shower and start editing this vlog ready for you all to watch and then sit down and read. We're gonna get there eventually. Good evening, it is quite late on Sunday evening but I am here to wrap up this very long vlog. I was editing it yesterday and you know what? I don't know why I said this vlog was gonna be any shorter than usual because it's not. <laughs> it's really not and I have edited down so so much and it's still probably one of the longest vlogs I've ever done. You know what, that just proves that when I'm tired I can ramble for England and will do so. So I am so sorry and you know what, congratulations for making it this far. I am genuinely impressed with you and your superpowers for putting up with me rambling. If you can hear a lot of background noise it is because it's a Sunday evening and there is football on and my brother's in his room and there is a lot going on so I apologise but I wanted to get on here, wrap this vlog up, finish editing and get everything ready for you to actually be able to watch this. So let's actually talk about the books that I read. So yesterday evening I read a little bit more of Ninth Rain, not loads. I got to page 116, which is chapter nine. I really am enjoying this. Like this is so, so good. It's really quite fantastic actually. We have two more perspectives, one of which we had at the start, it was actually a prologue, but for some reason I just didn't expect to be getting her perspective again, and that is Hestina, I think I'm pronouncing that right? No, Hestilian, Hest for short. She is the sister of Tor, who we've already met. She has chosen to stay with her people. With everything that's happening, she's just like, I'm not walking away with them, I am going to stay and look after them and do what I can. And so she is seeing her city and everything just fall to ruin because of this crimson flux. I feel like her chapters are going to be really good for things like foreshadowing of what's to come, especially because they have a cousin who who is trying to use what is basically tarot cards to divine the future and at the end of the chapter he gives kind of like this warning and I was a bit too tired to make all the connections but I definitely think when I get round to rereading this that is going to hold quite a bit of significance. I feel like I've made one connection already but like I said too tired to actually try and think more on it but I do think these chapters with Hest is going to be really interesting, really insightful and definitely ones to pay attention to. We also met a character called Lynn, Agent Lynn. She is actually a witch, a former, I'm going to call them inmates of this prison that the witches are being held in. The priests that are holding these witches have this thing where they say if you can prove to us that you have control and that they have control over you then you can leave the prison and you become an agent working for them doing these things for them which only witches can do um, just because of their talents. And Agent Lynn is one of these. Now to get to this place you know that they have been tortured to extremes and Agent Lynn is not exactly stable, she is a very deranged. There was this really quite horrific torture scene that I wasn't expecting in here and I think I found it so horrific because I wasn't expecting it. But Agent Lynn is tasked with bringing back Noon and we know that Noon escapes, that's not a spoiler, it is on the synopsis of this. So to do this she interrogates someone and I feel so bad for them because I really liked them as a character and um, instead they get tortured and I just feel so bad. But yeah, those were the two new characters. Not much else added to the story. As said, I didn't read loads. I don't actually think I'm going to get 
yet to read loads this evening either because it is quite late I still need to eat I've got my food cooking and I also want to try and edit the last few bits of this vlog I won't be able to do all the final edits but at least get the rough edit finish and then of course I've got work tomorrow so I don't think I'm going to read any more but today I did finish The Last Housewife and I really enjoyed this book I think it was really really well done it does look a lot at the power dynamics between men and women and the sexual dynamics as a result of that and I found it so interesting I think Ashley Winstead really handled this quite difficult subject well and in a way that was so intriguing. One thing I forgot to mention yesterday is the formatting of this book. It is done where you have kind of like a two timeline situation but not technically. So you'll have one which is present day of Shay trying to find out what happened to her best friend, uncovering everything that's to do with that and working with someone who is also her best friend from years ago who is the podcast host Jamie. So that's one timeline and then you get these moments where they are transcripts. I feel like in the book that would be better formatted than what I was getting on my phone but you get these transcripts of just between Jamie and Shay and they are talking about what happened to her in the past. So technically a past timeline but not because it's Shay talking about it in present day about what happened then. And I thought it was really really well done. The way they broke it up left it at each point that was so intriguing but I wanted to carry on with both sides of it. I wanted to know exactly what happened in the past but also what's happening in the present. I liked the twists and turns that this book took towards the end. This is a book that I definitely want to buy a physical copy of. I will wait until it's out in hardback, hardback? No, paperback. Um, and I will definitely want to reread this and annotate it. I really enjoyed it. I was highlighting a lot on my phone. Been a really, really good read. Highly recommend if you're interested in that sort of thing, do check all the trigger warnings and stuff. But this was a really impactful book. It kind of reminded me of, I'm not gonna get out because it's at the bottom. But um, My Dark Vanessa, it kind of looks at that sort of a power dynamic and I think it just did it really well. So definitely I'm looking forward to getting that book. I may get in hardback to go with My Dark Vanessa actually because it's of the same theme, maybe. Who knows, we'll see if I can actually find it in the shops. But yeah, really, really enjoyed that one and was really pleased. And that is everything for this week's vlog. So thank you so, so much for watching. If you made it this far, then let's put a house emoji because of the last housewife. I don't know why I always feel like I need to explain why the emoji, but that's the emoji of the day that we're going with. And like I said, thank you so much for watching. You are all amazing for getting this far. Like I am in awe. So thank you so so very much. If you have enjoyed this video, please do give it that thumbs up, subscribe, and comment to let me know that you're here. They really help the channel out. Social media links will be linked below, and I will catch you in the next video.